Hello, my name is Wildstag, and thank you for tuning in to another used book review. Today, I will be covering the book American Buffalo in Search of a Lost Icon by Stephen Rinella. It is a book about one man's passion for the American bison. He covers a lot of history and context of the bison as well as, and this is the meat of the book, a hunt that he wins a Alaska state lottery to be able to legally participate in. I bought it used at a place called Hole in the Wall Books. Um, let's see if I can get that in. There you go. Hole in the Wall Books is a now closed used bookstore in Falls Church, Virginia. Kind of crammed, uh, had to park in the back because there wasn't parking along the main road. It was kind of busy, it was near rush hour. But I found this book, but I brought this book along for reading material at that summer job in New Mexico that I had in 2018 and 2019 working at a summer camp. The book is from 2008, which means it's relatively new re compared to some of the other books I've covered so far. It's kind of new. The front matter of this book, there's no table of contents, so it's hard to really know what chapter is which when you're reviewing this book, like I did just an hour ago. There's a map here that has a couple um, numbered dots along the way things such as author's birthplace author's discovery of skull 1999 author's kill site 2005 um, bonfire shelter earliest and southernmost buffalo jump circa 9700 bc that one's actually right near the confluence of the pecos and rio grande river in texas so as well as it also has a approximate range of American Buffalo. It's all in black and white, so it's not, I can't show it to you uh, with this webcam. It would not really uh, convey that information as well as I'd like it to. The back matter says, in 2005, Stephen Rinella won a lottery permit to hunt for a wild buffalo in the Alaskan wilderness. In a book that combines adventure with a quirky blend of facts and observations about history and the natural world, Rinella takes us across the continent from the Bering Land Bridge, where scientists search for buffalo bones amid artifacts of the New World's earliest human inhabitants, to buffalo jumps, where Native Americans once ran over cliffs by the thousands. A captivating narrative of environmental and historical significance Rinella's tale is a fascinating examination of an animal that has haunted the American imagination for centuries. The uh, front matter says, uh, in testimony from San Francisco Chronicle, the most promising debut by a nature writer in years, a hymn to a complicated, long-standing human-animal relationship. This book is about Rinella's hunt for a bison. He has to... For various reasons, he has to raft up a river to get to the mountains where he ends up sighting some bison along a ridge. He goes down from that ridge to try and intersect where the bison is, and he, I guess I've already spoiled it by accident, but he ends up killing a bison out there. The hunt is what matters, though, and it's hard to describe because it's just that personal to him. It's fun to read, it's engaging. His description feels very true to life. I've never been in the Alaskan wilderness, that cold and snowy, damp wilderness, but a lot of the feelings he has in that wilderness, the unease with animals that could be around the corner, I, I can relate to some of that. The hunt costs a lot of money, because you have to get out into the wilderness, and that's never easy. 
he says something like only 2% of the permits ever actually get fulfilled. And I can believe that because it's the story he tells. It sounds difficult. How he gets it out, he suffers frostbite event, uh, eventually just getting it out. Interspersed between the stories about his hunt and the process to get to that hunt, he also tells stories about um, the context of bison in American history. Stories from his own past and having taken a bison skull he found in a national forest and then turning into uh, turning it into the National Forest Service. He says uh, in a footnote, actually, because I had found the skull on National Forest land, Kenneth Cannon encouraged me to report the find to the proper authorities. I resisted this at first, fearing that I'd broken a law by removing the skull from federal property, and now it would be taken from me. Eventually, the guilt was too much for me to handle, and I confessed my crime to Mark Sant, a federal archaeologist whose jurisdiction includes the Beaverhead National Forest. He granted me immunity in exchange for information. I submitted photos, a copy of the radiocarbon report, and a marked U.S. Geological Survey quadrangle map. With these materials, Sant promised to compile an archaeological site form on the skull. He also talks about uh, Ted Turner. Um... So he says, even with almost half a million buffalo living in North America, I still figured I'd never have a chance to hunt one. 96% of those animals are privately owned livestock. He finds out about Ted Turner's Flying D Ranch in Montana to hunt a trophy buffalo, as he calls it. It would cost about $4,000. Um, and he says, there's little romance or genuine experience in shooting a penned up animal companies that offer such services try to build up the experience with adventurous and dashing language. The website of an outfit in Iowa asks whether you have the passion, the drive, the determination to shoot down a buffalo inside its fenced pasture. He talks about in chapter 7, one of my favorite buffalo related stories begins on Thursday, August 27th, 1908 with the destruction of the town of Folsom, New Mexico. A century flood happens, a century storm, the kind of storm that only happens once a lifetime. And after the flood, a ranch hand named George McJunkin rode out to fix washed out fences. He had been born a slave in the 1850s on a ranch near Midway, Texas, but after Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation, he joined a cattle drive headed to Dodge City. He eventually passed through New Mexico and liked the state because it had sided with, un with the Union during the war. He found tending cattle and breaking horses. Uh, he found work tending cattle and breaking horses at the Crowfoot Ranch. He knew how to read and write and preferred books on archaeology, paleontology, and astronomy. While he was mending the washed out fences, he noticed the waters had gouged out the channel of Wild Horse Arroyo. It used to be just three feet deep, but now it was 13 feet deep, and at the bottom, a lot of buffalo bones were poking out of the ground. They were deeply buried and partially mineralized, which caught his attention because they were bigger than normal buffalo bones. He loaded some into his saddlebag, unaware that his discovery would set back the clock of human occupation in the New World by about 10,000 years, help launch a new scientific discipline, and cause a minor religious controversy. So there's that story. There's stories about buffalo jumps, about drowning buffalo, buffalo that drowned by the hundreds, and how that affected the ecosystems they lived in. Stories about settlement of buffalo hunters in the 1800s. All this different context throughout history of human's relationship with bison and how he wants to hunt one he finds out about the hunt because of his brother who lives in Alaska and all of this comes together for that big hunt that I was telling you about he is ultimately someone who is passionate about bison and wants preservation and restoration of their habitats he's not someone who just wants to hunt one for the fun of it he wants it because it's a lifelong dream of his to experience the totality of that uh, of uh, 
bison. And for him, that means not just seeing them in a zoo, but going out and hunting one. There's one footnote in the early part of the book that's about a page and a half long, and it talks about how Coronado was the first to see a bison, the first European to see an American bison, but he wasn't the first to see a wild American bison. Um, De Vaca, De Vaca um, was. De Vaca's um, kind of famous in the state of New Mexico for the Albuquerque and Santa Fe region. If you go up there, you'll see a lot of C de Baca or C de Baca um, street names. So his last name was Cabeza de Baca, um, usually shortened to C de Baca. While working in New Mexico for the first time, it really gave me a sense of the West and how amazing the West is. I bought it used for $9. It looks like it was $15 new. I would definitely buy this. If you're into memoirs and stories, the natural history of animals, this is something you'll want. American Buffalo in Search of a Lost Icon by Stephen Rinella. It's a good book. Check it out if you find it. My name is Wildstag, and thank you for tuning in to another used book review.